All right. Welcome, guys. Let's talk about React. Does anyone know what React is? Is a JavaScript what? Oh, library framework, library framework. That's an interesting discussion, yeah, from the first second. Is, this, is it a library or is it a framework? Is it a library? It's not a framework, yeah? It doesn't really matter at this stage of the journey. But if you ever go to a job interview, if your first statement is React is a library, is a framework, ha, 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 you don't get the job, right? So, yes, let's start learning things by accident. Le React is a library. Yeah, it goes beyond the scope of the session to explain what are the differences. Yeah? I didn't mention that, but my name is Ricardo. I'm a JavaScript developer. I've been doing coding for 20 years now. Um, yeah, and now I'm the founder of Coding. Here we help people with their coding skills. We have an academy, so we help people from literally nowhere until they get a job. We manage to help people to secure job opportunities at companies like Google or Sky TV, yeah? all these sort of things. So if anyone is interested in coding professionally, making 700, uh, 750 a day, working from uh, Cuba or from Riviera Maya or all these sort of things, let me know because we can help you. Yeah? We don't make really any business, but we are very passionate about coding. And this session should be a test just to show you how do we work here at Codery. All right, so React created by who? Facebook. Oh, Facebook, yeah, good point, yeah, Facebook. So React is arguably the most popular JavaScript library. Yeah? We're talking about JavaScript. React, at the end of the day, is just JavaScript. Yeah? Does anyone know which is the most popular programming language in the world? JavaScript or Python? Mm. It is JavaScript. It is JavaScript. If anyone tells you it's Python, don't trust that person anymore. Don't give them any money, because you will never get that money back, right? It is JavaScript. And this is not what I think. It's not because I've been doing JavaScript for 20 years. It's because GitHub reports that. Do you know GitHub? GitHub is the Bible of coding. 97% eh? of the code in the world is hosted by GitHub. And they say that there are 2.3 million of repositories in, in written in JavaScript. Only, only 1 million in Python. Yeah? Python is very trendy, it's very popular. We'll start talking about Python, data science, machine learning, blah, 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 in November. So please keep an eye to our meetup channel. But for now, JavaScript is the king, yeah? So JavaScript is the king. Why? Why you should learn JavaScript if you don't know JavaScript yet? Do you think it's, it's any easier? Is any better? Is any faster? Is any sexier than Python or any other? Why? Why is so popular JavaScript? It's front-end and front-end and back-end. That's a good point. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, and what else? Asynchronous? No, no. There are other asynchronous languages as well. Let's go back in time. In 1995, you are old enough, you'll remember things like Netscape, yeah? Netscape Navigator, yeah? So JavaScript was the only, the only programming language that in 1995, in December 4th of 1995, got the ring, got married with a web browser, yeah? In 1995, no one really cared that much about the internet, yeah? It was like a, you know, not a big thing. But obviously today, the internet is everywhere. As a side effect, the web browser is everywhere. And as a side effect of the side effect, JavaScript is everywhere. Yeah? Whoever controls the web dominates the world. And JavaScript is the king. And that's why companies like Facebook are investing billions yeah, into JavaScript, into React. So now Facebook controls the development of the web. But before Facebook, what was the former king of the JavaScript world before React? Does anyone know? Any framework? Angular. Angular, yes, you say that. Angular. Yeah. Before React, Angular was the king. Who looked after Angular? Google. Google, that's correct. That's correct. I was one of the first Angular developers in the world. I've been doing international conferences for Google. Uh, so yeah, Google had the control, then now Facebook took the control. Of, you see you see the rivality, yeah? you see the fight to dominate the web. And now What's next on the horizon? Is there any rival for Facebook and all the money and data? Is there any other library locking the door? Amazon, no. Vue, yes. Vue, yes. And who is looking after Vue? No. No. Wrong. Far. The Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> 
you see, you see the wall, right? Software has been controlled by the Americans from the first day. But now the Chinese are pushing a lot. Vue is a fantastic example. Vue is an amazing library if you want to build web application. I think it's fair to say that in, West, in the West, it's still not as popular as React. In other words, why we learn today React? Why our students become amazing React developers? Because seven out of 10 job offers talk about React. But reality is, if you're planning to move to China or Southeast Asia, please consider Vue. Yeah? It's a very, very good library. Anyway, today let's talk about React, right? So I hope you watch the video on the Kodiri platform with a very sexy voice of mine. Yeah? And then thanks to that, you install something called Create React App, right? You got that installed. This is the engine. That's, that's the mechanism also created by Facebook to easily create new React applications. Yeah? In the 90s, creating new applications was a piece of cake. Right click, new file, index.html, one kilobyte. Yeah? Does anyone know what's the size of, a, of an empty React application with Create React App without doing anything? 350 megs. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, don't forget Street Fighter 2, 1991, 24 megs. You have fun for a decade. Yeah, now 350 megs and you get nothing. Hello world. But it's what it is, right? Thankfully, this space is, is very cheap these days. Anyway, create React app. The only thing you need to do is you need to install it. If you watch the video, you need to install Node. What is Node, by the way? Ah, correct. Node is JavaScript running in the back end. Yeah, someone mentioned that before. So the main reason why JavaScript became so popular is because it runs on the web. But the second reason is it runs also on the back end. Think about that. In the 90s, even early in, the, in this century, if you wanted to create a startup, you get funding, if you get 5 million to create a, a new piece of software, you need to hire at least two developers. One in the front end, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, UX, all these things. And one in the back end, Java, Python, PHP, C Sharp, whatever. Yeah? And someone thought, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we need JavaScript, because that's the only one, the only language that runs in the browser, why don't we support JavaScript also on the back end? So with one developer, you can do everything. Yeah? It makes sense, right? It's pretty, pretty fundamental. So that's Node.js, JavaScript in the back end. Here in the bootcamp, of course, we learned that. APIs, how to fetch data from external services. All right, so once we got Node, once we got Create React App, let's actually create a new application. So how do we create a new application? You need to open a terminal. A terminal is this sort of uh, hacky window with black background and white text, yeah? If you're a Mac user, it's literally speaking called terminal. If you're a Windows user, you can open uh, CMD or PowerShell, there are different alternatives, yeah? And if you're a Linux user, I'm sure you know how to do it. So once we got that, we can type create React app and then space and then the name of our application. That's an important because the name of our application will be simply one folder in our system, yeah? the root folder. So what do we want to build today? To be honest, I don't care. So the topic is not that relevant. The important thing is to learn how to build stuff. So. What do you prefer to talk about today, guys? Do you prefer to talk about Hollywood actors? Do you prefer to talk about uh, sexy politicians, football clubs, car manufacturers, Formula One drivers? Give me a topic. Movies. Movies, fantastic. Let's talk about movies. Look, create React app, space movies. Yeah? That's the name of the root folder. So then, once we got that, we press enter with a lot of energy, and then look at what's going on. Now, we are delegating the control of our system into Facebook, which sounds a bit scary, right? So now Facebook is downloading all the dependencies, tools, plugins, libraries, packages, all we need to start dealing with the amazing world of React. Trust me, without that tool, we may need one or two weeks to start dealing with React, right? Now we need only a couple of minutes. So, in my particular case, it went really fast. 
And now before doing anything else with the terminal, let's talk about Visual Studio Code. Yeah? Have you installed Visual Studio Code? Yeah? Who looks after Visual Studio Code? Microsoft. Be careful. Don't, con don't get confused between Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. There are two completely separate tools. Yeah? We want to install Visual Studio Code, which is a lightweight, very nice, very nice piece of software. Yeah? I know that some developers, they like other IDEs. Do you know any text, any code editor? IntelliJ. IntelliJ? What? Webstorm. Webstorm, it's pretty much the same. What? what? NetBeans. NetBeans, Eclipse, Atom, Sublime, yeah, many. However, now, the king of the text editors is VS Code, created by Microsoft. And this is because of multiple reasons. First of all, it's free. Yeah? WebStorm is not free. Uh, it's open source. Sublime is not open source. You got a new version every single month. Yeah? Very agile. And to me, one of the most important aspects is, does anyone know in which language VS Code is written? Aha. 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 Here we start smelling that now JavaScript is so powerful, so popular, that the scope of JavaScript is not only Google Chrome, www. Yeah? No, 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 no. You can run native, native applications in your system. Windows, Android, iPhone, yeah? VS Code, fantastic, fantastic editor. All right, so let's open VS Code. So, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, right? So once you open Visual Studio Code, what we need to do is to open, you get something like that, and if it's the first time you've done that, you get like an empty welcome page, right? So we need to open our movies uh, application. How do we do that? Look, open folder. Open folder or alternatively file open. That's the same, yeah? I click on open folder, and now the challenge is to find where our React project is in our system, yeah? This is extremely important. By default, if you are a uh, Mac user, you will see that the default is your home directory, yeah? If you're a Mac user and you type pwd, not here, sorry. After installing it, it will tell you your home directory. If you're a Windows user, I'll type how the home directory looks on Windows. It's something like C colon slash users slash your username, sexy boy 19, and then the name of your repo, movies, something like that. Yeah? So please make sure you are able to identify where your home directory is. This is very important. And once we manage to identify, let, let's just go, go for it, right? So I go to my home directory, uh, and then you see, interestingly enough, I didn't save my project in that folder. You see, this is one of the things of live coding. So you will see many tutorials on YouTube where developers, they prepare everything and everything works smoothly. I don't like to do that. Yeah? I believe the best way to learn is by making mistakes because then we can solve them together. So I was expecting my project to be here. Probably you cannot see anything, but you can trust me if I tell you that the project is not here. That means that I created it on a different directory. So no problem at all. I'll move it quickly. So I need 20 seconds. And then, uh, yeah, by mistake, uh, here, you see my movies folder is inside of another repo. So I did a mistake. But that's fine. I will move it. I'll move it to my home directory. I'll try to move it. I'll try to move it. Right. Because that doesn't work, I'll move it using Finder or Finder. Or because I don't want to waste your time, I'll create it again on my home directory, right? And I'll delete it later on. Right. So let me do it again. Sorry, sorry about the, that delay. 
Three React App movies. Uh, give me a second. Uh, I'm trying to see what happened. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, because I'm a Mac user. I got a folder called movies already. So I need to create, create it with a different name. Create React app movies does app something like that yeah you cannot see anything because it's at the bottom but now you see create react app movies app yeah because in my folder because i'm a mac user i already have a movies folder that was just a coincidence all right so back to vs code and now i can clearly see if you're sitting on the first table that my first folder on my home directory is the movies app i select open even though it's still installing, it may take a couple of minutes, but as soon as you press the button, you can open it. And then we'll see what happened in a minute, as soon as the process finish. That's it, that's it. Cool, so what's next? According to the terminal, look at that message at the bottom. This is very important. Sometimes we tend to ignore instructions, right? And thankfully, these instructions are pretty straightforward. So here, Facebook is telling us what to do to start working with React. Every new piece of software written in JavaScript needs a server. Yeah? So what we do once a day, first thing in the morning, we start a server. And once the server is running, we can do coding. Yeah? So we can do two things. We can start the server using this black terminal, or let me show you a hint. Yeah? Here we talk about productivity all the time, how to do more in less time. Let's prepare, let's show you the problem. If I run the server here, but then I code using Visual Studio, you see the problem, I need to go back and forth, right? What happens if I change a line of code, I break the application, Oh, why is it not working? I need to go to the terminal, see the stack trace. It's okay, but it's not the best way. It's not the best way. So let me show you a hint. Let me show you a hint. The less ping pong you do, the better. So how do you avoid ping pong? From Visual Studio, you can open an integrated terminal, which is fantastic. If you go to the menu, you will see on top an option called terminal, new terminal. And then look, boom, you see? You got a terminal integrated into VS Code. So if there is a problem, I will spot it immediately. And once we got that, the very only thing we need to do, and this is a pattern not only in React, but in JavaScript to start the server, is to type npm space, what else? Start, start. fantastic. That's the very single command we run every single day at 9 a.m., right? NPM start, we hit enter, and now look at what happened. I'm not touching my keyboard. You can see my hands. You see the browser, so the system automatically opened the browser. It opened a new tab, and you cannot see because it's on top of the screen, but now it's trying to bootstrap my React application. Here you go, you see, boom, yeah? If you get that message, that means your system is ready. You have all the dependencies sorted. They changed the logo last week. Yeah, don't ask me why, I have no idea. But anyway, that's, 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 that's the way it works. All right, so this is the very, 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 very starting point. We got the React logo, fantastic. And then what? Well, then we start doing coding, right? That's why everyone is here today. So look at the message, the very single message, edit, source, app, and say to reload. So Facebook is telling us, please go to VS Code or whichever editor you are using and look at the left hand side. I'll zoom it a bit more. SRC, you click on it and then open app.js, you see? And if you open that file, this is our very first React component. Yeah? One of the reasons why React became so popular is because it uses a very smart way to combine JavaScript and HTML. Yeah? If you never touch React, if you come from a different language, different framework, different library, 
most likely you are used to have a JavaScript file, an HTML file, a CSS file, yeah? React is very smart. React can combine all these principles. So this is a JavaScript file. However, does anyone know what language is that? JSX. Ooh, JSX. Mm, that's interesting. It is JSX. But if you have no idea what JSX means, yes, that looks like HTML, right? If you've done a bit of HTML, hello, this is my homepage, picture of, of your cat, yeah, all these all these things. So this looks like HTML. But in reality, in reality, it's a bit different to HTML. But to start from, to start with, we can assume this is sort of HTML. All right. And what HTML we got here? This is essentially the source code that generates that website. Yeah, source code, result, result, source code. Nice to meet you. So let's do something. Let's change the HTML. Let's see what happened, right? Look at line number 11. Edit, source app, and say to reload. That message is literally that message. Yeah? Let's change, let's update the line to something like, welcome to the movies app. Yeah? Something like that. Once we change the title and you save the file, remember guys to save the file. Yeah? In a future session, we will learn how to tell VS Code to save files automatically, yeah? I used to say that VS Code is like a dog. If you train it, it can do lots of tricks, yeah? If not, it will all only have a big poo on the carpet. All right, so welcome to the Movies app. And then, look, back to the browser. Here you go, we got the title, yeah? We got the title. Even though that seems natural if it's the first time you are doing coding, I didn't have to refresh the browser. As soon as I change my file and I save it, the browser automatically picks the changes. That's a new thing. That's a new thing. Historically speaking, you have to go to the browser and refresh. Yeah. So that's a very good improvement in terms of productivity. All right. Imagine that the title looks a bit small, right? I'm pretty sure people from the back of the, of the room may struggle to read the white text. How can we change the size of the text using HTML? No, we say HTML. Does anyone know an attack in HTML to change the font size? Use the H1. H1, fantastic. Let's do that. Look, H1. Why am I doing that? Just to prove that in reality we can type HTML. So if you know a bit of HTML, you don't start from scratch. You can reuse all that knowledge. And you see, and now the title looks very sexy. Yeah? All right, so that's the first thing. However, Again, imagine that you got uh, lucky enough to be selected by a prince in somewhere that wants to give you five million to build uh, an app, right? You never start an app with a React logo. Yeah? Imagine that you are a painter. You always start from a blank canvas, right? You don't start right painting on top of a poster. You start from scratch. So I like to do something. I would like to tie the app tidy up. I don't care about the React logo. I don't care about links. I just want to display a title. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to select line number 11. I'll cut it. And I'm going to delete pretty much everything. I'm going to delete from line number 8 to line number 21. Yeah, I'm going to only leave the root tag, you see. And now here is my title. Welcome to the movies app. What happens if now we go back to the browser? Ah. Yeah. To me, this is a much better starting point. I hope you agree. Because now we can be a bit more creative and we can do add colors and, and animations and whatever we want, right? Cool, this is looking good to me. Now, let's just start talking about movies. I like to display a list of movies. I'm going to do it in the wrong way first. Because sometimes the best way to learn is, first of all, see the problem and then improve it, right? So the very, very classic way to display a list of movies will be, I will add a div. A div is like, uh, you know, an element in HTML that can have elements inside of it. And then I will display the title of the movie. 
So just feel free to choose your favorite movie. In my particular case, will be Megasark versus Crocosaurus. Uh, this is the title, only the title. Probably the title should be a bit smaller. H1 is the title of our app. We can use H2, for instance, to have a slightly smaller text. Yep. And now, next thing. Let's learn to add images to our React application. I got the title, fantastic, but I want to see a picture yeah, of, my, of my fantastic movie. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search the movie, right? There is nothing about coding in the next two minutes. Google, I paste the title of the movie, I go to images, and then I click on the first image, and then I do right click, and I will save the image as, this is now very important guys. Again, once again, we need to find where our project is. That will be hopefully your home directory. Let me find it. Here you go. Movies up. And then finally, we have to save the image into the SRC folder. Yeah, into the source folder. Don't save it outside. Save it inside. And a very last suggestion here. Please rename the image. By default, Google will display a very weird image name probably because you have to refer to that image name. So please keep it simple. So I'm going to use Crocosaurus as my image name. And then what happens once you download the image? Once you download the image, you will see that VS Code automatically notice, hey, there's a new image here. You can click on it. Yeah? That's really cool. And now, we could the image already downloaded. How do we display it? This is very important. We need to do two things to display images in React. First of all, we need to import it. Yeah? We need to import it. Importing an image is like buying beers. That doesn't mean you are going to drink them, but they are available in the fridge if you need them, right? So let's put the image into the fridge, if you accept the expression. How do we do that? Import. And now the name of the variable that holds the image, you can put whatever you want now. We'll talk about semantics in a minute, but for now you can put whatever you want. In my case, it will be Crocosaurus. And then from, and now with quotes, we need to find where the image is in our system. Thankfully, we can use a relative path. Because my app.js is on the same folder as my Crocosaurus.js, jpg you see they understand their siblings they are neighbors the easiest way to put the crocosaurus into the fridge is with dot slash that means both resources are on the same folder and then crocosaurus dot jpg be careful with the extension yeah you may have a png jpeg gif maybe be careful with that and now we got the image ready. Do you think the image will be displayed on the screen? Yes or no? No, correct, because it's on the fridge, but it's not, we are not consuming it yet. How can we display images in HTML, guys? Image tag, fantastic, fantastic. You see, this is one of the reasons why React is so popular. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. The message from React is, if you already know a bit of HTML, fantastic, you know that, you know that already. You, Right, with an image tag, we can add a, an image adding an attribute called SRC. Be careful, be careful. You can't imagine how many times a student has called me saying, hey, why my image is not displayed? And after 20 minutes of research, you notice that he or she typed SCR, right? It's not SCR, it's SRC, it stands for source, yeah? And now, that's the first tricky part of the session. In HTML, in classic HTML, you will do something like that. You will refer to the image as a, as a, as a piece of text. But because we are using React, look at what happened on line number three. We have our Crocosaurus variable, so we need to refer to it. Every time you refer to a JavaScript variable in a React component, we need to use curly brackets. Look. You see? Curly bracket. Open curly bracket or curly brace and then you close it. And inside of the braces, you refer to the variable name, Crocosaurus. 
And finally, we can close the deck. Does it make sense? Will it work or not? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So we managed to display the image. I told you before that I like to have the server running on the same window because if there is any error or any warning, I can quickly spot it. And even though it's a bit small, hopefully you can see at the bottom, ooh, some, some, some messages. Look, ooh, 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 compile with warnings. Let's have a look to the warnings. First of all, line two, logo is defined but never used. This is legacy, this is legacy. You remember 27 minutes ago we had the React logo, but we deleted it. Yeah? So is there any point of leaving line number two? No, we don't care anymore, right? Let's clear it. Let's clean it. Out. And now, is it working? Ooh, still not. We got another warning. Let's tidy up, guys. Let's tidy up. Now it's easier to focus on the problems. Once we have three millions of lines of code, it's much more complicated. So can anyone tell me what that means? Image elements must have an alt property. Alter alternative for what? But why we need to des why we need to describe images? Does anyone know? Yeah. So here we're talking about impaired people. Yeah. Imagine blind people they can still use the web, thankfully. Yeah? So they have some special web browsers. Yeah? And these special web browsers, they will do something like that. You are now welcome to the movies app. You got a title, Megasar versus Crocosaurus. Yeah, they are describing the content of the web page to the, to the person. However, how a screen reader can describe an image? Today, that's not possible, unfortunately. Because that's not possible, we need to help the screen reader. That's a warning. I mean, the app works, but according to the human guidelines, whenever we have an image, we should add another attribute called ALT, A-L-T, stands for alternative, and then we should describe the image. So to keep it simple, the description of the image will be the title, yeah? So at least now, the blind person will say, will read, title, Megasar versus Crocosaurus. There is an image of Megasar versus Crocosaurus. Yeah? I strongly believe that this is about to change drastically. And this is because of AI. Yeah? It's not that complicated. If you think about that, it's not, rocket, it's not like sci-fi. A, sc a screen reader may take the image, paste it into Google, and Google will tell will tell the screen reader this image is about whatever. Yeah? This is happening, guys. This is happening. Maybe in a few years, the old attribute won't be necessary. But today, still, we should drop it. All right. So we got our first image. I'm going to quickly add two more images. Because with three images, with three movies, it will be easier to spot the problem. So look at what I'm doing. I'm going to copy and paste these four lines two times. So now, as you can imagine, I will have Megasar versus Crocosaurus three times. Yeah. And now, of course, I'm going to replace titles and images. So feel free to pick your uh, favorite movie. So I'll pick another two. Again, you can, you can take whatever you want. So for instance, I'll take Sharktopus half shark, half octopus as my second movie. It's the same, the same principle, right? You do right click, save image as, then you select your source folder and be careful with the name of the image. Shark topus. And then finally I'll select mega python versus Gatoroid. All right, so you click on these resources and you save them, right? So let's do that in one minute. And then, of course, let's update the references into the source code, right? 
you need to do two things. You need to add a new import. And then you need to display them. Be careful with the extension of the files. In my particular case, some images are small, other images are huge. I mean, to be honest, I don't really care at this stage of the journey, right? This is not a UX session. Talking about UX, we have the, our very first UX session. We have a specialist in UX on the 12th of November. So you're more than invited to join us, yeah? So hopefully you manage to get free titles with the free corresponding images, yeah? I give you 20 extra seconds. I got a question for you guys. Can I rename, can I rename, for instance, let's talk about Mega Python. That was my last movie. Can I rename Mega Python with Brexit? Will it work or not if I rename it at, at the bottom? Should. It should work, right? Yeah. Yes, it works. It's arguably the only scenario where the Brexit works as expected. But what do you think? If you go to a job interview and the employer shows you that piece of code, and just, just a chat, right? Here at the bootcamp, we, we, we train, we train uh, job interviews, we, we train this sort of thing, right? So if I show you that piece of code, what, what, will, what will be your reaction? Good, bad, and why? Very bad. Why very bad? Because uh, you're loading the image. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. That's the point. Yeah. The most difficult aspect of coding is not how to write code. It's how to read code. Yeah? Don't forget that today you're going to be part of a team. Yeah? So you'll be reading others' code. And reading code is challenging. It's complicated. So don't do these things. Yeah? Try to be as much descriptive as possible. Yeah? Semantics. So that should be called Mega Python. And now let me, let me ask you a question. Look at what I'm doing at the moment. A bit of programming culture. If you notice, I put a capital P, Mega Python. Yeah? Does anyone know what's the name of that case? Camel case. Mm, that's correct. That's correct. This is called camel case. Why? Look at the shape of the word. It does like the, like the camel, yeah? Somehow. And what if I am a PHP developer and I do that? What? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But what's, what's the name of the case? Snake case. Snake case, correct. Goes <laughs> up and down like a snake, yeah? And what if I... This is a bit more complicated. The same as camel, but with the first character in capital. You see? What's the name of that case? Title. No? Upper camel case, a bit uh, yeah, romantic, but not correct. <laughs> so this is called Pascal case, because Pascal was the first programming language to use that style yeah, of coding. And the very last one, this is all these all this three styles are valid in JavaScript, yeah? all good. To be honest, the, the recommendation in JavaScript, according to the guidelines, is camel case. By the way, talking about recommendation, does anyone know who decides that? Who said use that instead of all in capitals? Who decides, who looks after the styling of the coding? Yeah, 
I'm, I'm, not argue, I'm not arguing if that's good or not. I'm saying who, who decides that? I'll, I'll give you a hint. There are, there are few standards, but the most popular one is defined by a company. It's not a standard in Switzerland, no, no, it's an, it's an American company. Does anyone know who, which American company decides that? Facebook. No. <laughs> it's not Facebook, it's not Google, it's not Microsoft. No, no, no. ECMA decides the standard, the new features. But this is not a standard, this is a suggestion. What's the best way of coding? I'll give you a hint. Summer, Magaluf, holidays, cheap alcohol. Airbnb, that's correct. That's correct. Airbnb, surprisingly, Airbnb decides these things. And you may be thinking, why Airbnb? There, there are other standards, yeah? For instance, Google, historically speaking, has been the main actor about guidelines. But at some point, the community realized that it was a bit complicated to satisfy because there were many, 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 many details, yeah? So it was very, very exhausting to satisfy all these requirements. And then Airbnb, a few years ago, decided to publish a new style guide that is a simplified version of the Google one, and the community adopted it, yeah? So if you go to uh, Google and you search Airbnb JavaScript style guide, yeah, literally the first result, it's just, it's just a document, right? But that document tells you how to create a variable, how to, when to use, you see, it's really good because it talks about, you see, bad, good, you know, all these things, yeah? That's a really good thing. So they have a very popular style guide about JavaScript and a very popular style guide about React. And whenever I'm not sure if my style is correct, I check with them, yeah? All right, so back from Magaluf. Let's, uh, yeah, that was still valid. There is, I, I, forget, I forgot to say, there is an, one style that is not valid in JavaScript. That's the only one that is not valid. This one, you see? Error. What's the name of this style? Case. What's the name of a case? No. There are two valid answers. One if you are about 40, one if you are below 40 years old, right? The classic, the classic way to call that is Lisp case. Because Lisp was the first programming language to use it. However, if you go to Stack Overflow, and you talk with your nephew about Lisp case, you feel a bit awkward, right? In modern coding, this is called kebab case. Yeah? <laughs> Just imagine the blade going through the meat, yeah? Kebab case. It's not valid in JavaScript, but in other languages it is valid, right? All right, back to our original mega Python syntax. By the way, every time you change something, please go back to the browser, make sure everything still works, right? Because it's very easy to break your app. All right, so what we got so far, let's recap. We got an app with a title with three movies. And for each movie, we have the title of the movie and the image, yeah? And it's fine, yeah, it works, no problem at all. But imagine that you work at Netflix, yeah? By the way, we didn't mention that, but here at the bootcamp, we build Coldflix, which is the combination of Netflix and Coldery, yeah? We build a similar version to Netflix. Imagine that you're creating an app with 3,000 movies. Do, do you really think we are going to do that? That we're going to copy and paste and have a huge file? No, no. Clearly not, right? Clearly not. And this is where React becomes so essential. With React, we can create components. Say that word, components. A component is a piece of code that you can reuse. Yeah? Let me show you an example. If you go to easyjet.com, I was going to put the example of Thomas Cook, but probably it's not the best one. <laughs> if you go to easyjet, yeah, you get the, the calendar, right? You, you want to travel from this day. You, you see, you got few calendars. Obviously, they don't write the same code twice. So they created the calendar component once, and then they reuse it multiple times, yeah? So this fits perfectly with the idea behind React. And this is what I'd like to do now. I would like to create a component to encapsulate the complexity of my app. 
how do we create a component? At the end of the day, a component, at least on its very simplistic scenario, is just a JavaScript function. So we're going to create a JavaScript function. If you don't really know what a JavaScript function is, we have a other session about introduction to JavaScript. But for now, for now, look, look at what I'm doing. Above, above, on top of my function app, don't do it inside, above, you see, in between of the imports on the function, I'm going to type function, and then, then we need to type the name of the component, starting with a capital, movie, yeah? Because that will hold the information of a single movie. And then, in here, we can return what the movie will return. For now, for now, for now, look, I'm going to return something silly, just to test the approach. I'm typing a div, yeah? And inside of the div, I display hello. I like to do this, right? Before go dealing with the chicken of the exercise, let's test the approach. So I have a new component called movie. So whenever it's executed, it will display hello, yeah? And then look at what I'm doing. Let's render the movie component. How do we render a movie component? Look at how simple it is. At the end of the journey, components are just HTML tags. In other words, look, I can open, I can type movie, and I can close it. That's it. You see how simple, how powerful this pattern is. If I go back to the browser, it's a bit small, but here you go, yeah? And of course, of course, can I reuse it multiple times? Of course, and we'll get hello three times, yeah? You get the point, right? And now, let me replace the stupid hello component with something a bit more meaningful. Look at what I'm doing now. I'm going to cut the first movie, the entire four lines of code, pop, cut, and that will be what my movie component will return. Something like that, yeah? And I'm going to remove the other two movies. Can anyone tell me what my app will display now? All right, so what, what happened now? What will, what three will, times. three times what? We'll get the same movie three times, yeah? Movie, 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 for each time, let's, 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 let's prove that. Look, one, fantastic, I love it. Twice, still loving it, but not that much. And three times, I got bored of it, right? So, first of all, they, I think the idea is correct because we managed to create to encapsulate the logic in the component. We saved. You can see that we, now the code looks smaller, right? It's clearly smaller. However, we need to fine tune, we need to change the data. For instance, the title, the title. Let's learn how to reuse the movie component by changing the title each time. Look at how powerful the mechanism is. When we execute the component, we can pass an attribute. For, oops, for instance, we can pass title. We can put whatever you want here. You can put Boris Johnson if you want, right? But just to keep it meaningful, I'll call it title because that's the title of my movie. And then, Mega Sark versus Crocosaurus. And then, likewise with the other two, uh, Sark Topus. And finally, on the third one, something like that, right? What are your feelings now, guys? Will it now display? No, why not? Look, even though now we are providing the appropriate title to our sexy movie component, it doesn't really care, right? You say, yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can give me whatever you want. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay attention. And if we actually, if we, if we have a look, look, mega shark, again mega shark, again mega shark. So that's not quite ready yet. How do we solve it? Look at how simple this is. First of all, we need to pass an argument. The name of the argument doesn't matter. You can put, you can type whatever you want. You can type Nigel Farage if you want. 
the community suggests to call that props inside of the parentheses. Yeah? Inside of the parentheses, you type props. And this is an object. Yeah? If you don't know what an object is in JavaScript, again, you're more than welcome to join any of our introduction to JavaScript sessions. All right, and what do we do with that object? Look, I'm going to select the hard-coded title. I'll delete it. And I want to refer the object. Do you remember what I said 41 minutes ago about how to access JavaScript variables in React? Correct, curly braces. We put curly braces again. And then we need to type props and then the name of the property. What's the name of the property we want to display? Title, fantastic. So look, we need to type a dot. The dot is the way in JavaScript you tell please access that property and then the name of the property, props.title. Yeah? Let's see if it works now. Look, make a sark and then let's have a look at the second one. Aha, now it's dynamic, right? Aha, yeah? So now the title is good. Are we done already or not? No, what happened with the picture, right? Let's repeat the same pattern with the picture. Can anyone tell me how to send a dynamic picture to the movie component? The same thing, right? Let's put image and then because we want to access a variable that we're importing, what do we need to do again? Curly, Curly braces, yeah? You see, even though it feels a bit complicated, when you've done the same thing 20 times, it becomes a bit more natural. So image equal and with curly braces, the name of the image, Crocosaurus. And likewise with the other two, yeah, I'll rename them in a second. Yeah, will it work or not? Why not? Yes, what happened guys? Look at line number 10. Once again, literally the same problem. We are passing the right image. However, the component said, okay, okay, I'm using the right title, but I'm ignoring you on the image. Yeah, still hard coded. So what do we need to put here? I'm not going to do that. Say it again. Prop.image. Nice. Let's see if it works. Look. The first one, right? The second one, slowly. Uh -huh. Nice. It works, right? Now it works. Again, if you are doing the last stage of a job interview, you are thinking on what to do with 750 a day. The question is, is that perfect? Will you change anything else? The side, all right. It's Styling aside, purely talking about the code. What? Reusability. I think it's quite reusable. Is there any, any, any smelly thing on that code? Anything wrong? No one? Really? Old. Yeah. Now the screen reader is, say, is saying Sartopus. A picture, Megasar versus Crocosaurus, confusing, confusing. How do we dynamically refer to the title here, guys? Props of title, like that? All right, we do that. Let's, let's do that. And I'm now a screen reader. Sartopus, props dot title. Why it doesn't work? Curly braces, yeah? You see, it's the same thing, the same story, again, again, and again, right? Yes. Curly braces, props of title. And now, this is literally perfect. This is super sexy, yeah? All right, so the very last question of this blog, the very last question. Now, you are growing as a team, you are getting users, you get traction, you get investment. It's working, right, it's working. And now your business analyst says, hey, our customers will like to see the score of each movie, right? Based on our review database, because if they, if they don't know which movie they want to see, 
they want to see the score. So this movie has a score of 7 out of 10, you know, all these things. So how can we pass a number with the score of each movie? That's all right, I live 10 minutes away, so I, I, I can be here for a while, no problem. Anyone can tell me how to give a new argument to the movie function? Score? How we do that? Yeah, no, but here, let's have a look here. Look, these three, this, this three lines. I want to provide this score, right? We, we're providing the title, we're providing the image. Correct, we can pass a new, a new attribute here, right? Score equals Mikasar, I mean, that's a masterpiece, 9.1, and then Sarctopus, slightly worse, 7.8, and then, yeah, I like the actors here, 8.2, no, 0.4. Right? So we got the score of each movie. And now finally, 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 finally. Near to the title, I want to do something like open in parentheses, score, colon, and then the number. How do we do that? Can we do that? Look. Score, and then what? Props, curly brace, like that. No, curly brace, props, props score, like that. Props dot score, fantastic, fantastic. And close curly brace, right? Let's see if that works. Ah, yeah, you see? You see, fantastic. So I hope you get the point of how can we, actually that's wrong, it's not 8.4, it's 8.7. I hope you get the point of how to uh, deal with React components, yeah? Beyond the scope of the session is to talk about how to scale the system. At the moment, we've got only two components, app and movie. But in a real application, we may have hundreds. So we may want to create a new file for each component, scalability, yeah? But again, that sits beyond the scope of this session. Is there any questions? No? All right, so we are almost done. I just need 10 minutes of your time to show you the training. If you like React, I'd like to show you how do we, how do I train my React skills. It's a free tool, so anyone can, can use it, right? Uh, so if you go to coldity.com, I know that some of you uh, have been already playing with that. So you go to call, uh, so you go to calldd.com, you get all the details about the bootcamp, but then you see if there's a play button. Yeah? Again, this is, this is free. So there's a play button on top, you click on it, and once you join the platform, which is free of course, then what? I'll show you. You will see on the left hand side, training. Oh, and here you can evaluate your technical skills, JavaScript, React, and HTML and CSS. This Friday, we are adding TypeScript. And next month, Python and Java, yeah? So let's talk about React. Let me show you an example. If I select React, we have different levels of difficulty. Let's do beginner. And let's do something very, 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 very basic, right? So let me show you something. So what, how does it work? On the left-hand side, you got a question. So for every test, you have to deal with five questions, yeah? So here, the question is, please create a welcome component. So whenever we call the component, you should return welcome to React, yeah, very simplistic. If that sounds like Chinese, we have dedicated videos for each question to help you dealing with the problem. And on the right-hand side, it's time to do a bit of coding, yeah? That's, this is a code editor. Does anyone know which code editor is that? Correct, that's VS Code, yeah? You see the beautifulness of VS Code? Because it's written in JavaScript, I can 
copy the no, copy the code. I can take the code and drop it into the Codeir platform, right? So you can use all the shortcuts, all the tricks, all the hints. All right. Welcome to uh, React. This is my proposal. Do you think the code on the right hand side satisfies the appetite on the qu of the question on the left? No? Why not? Let's have a look. Let's test it. You see, we've got a test button. Let's see what happened. Mm, it fails. But at least it's highlighting. Can anyone tell me what the problem is reading the green message on top? What's the difference? Correct. Exclamation mark. Coding is about paying attention to detail. Yeah? Once we drop the exclamation mark, we'll hopefully get confetti time. Yeah? Everyone loves confetti. However, and this is one of the reasons why our students managed to secure a job so quickly after the bootcamp. Look, even though the solution is correct, we got a warning. According to Airbnb, again, standards, again, we should complete our lines with a semicolon. Yeah? That's the way our script works. No problem at all. Let's put the semicolon. Yeah? And once we have the semicolon in place, will we get confetti? Yes, more confetti, right? All right, so then once the solution is correct, we can move to the next question. I mean, this is just the idea, right? You're more than welcome to play around, to deal with the questions, blah, blah, blah. Let me just show you what happened at the end. I'm going to skip all the other questions because I want to, to finish shortly. And let's submit the challenge. Let's see what happened. Look, you get a score. So this score is telling you how good your performance is based on different metrics. Tenacity, how many questions you completed. Accuracy, how many times you submit and you failed. Speed, how long it took you to complete the challenge. Focus, how many times you went to Google to get help. And elegance, how standard your code is according to Airbnb. Yeah? So what do we do with that? Well, you are part of the system. So if you're looking for a job here, you can measure your uh, technical abilities against your colleagues, right? We can also play challenges. Some of you have been participating on that already, right? So challenge means everyone in the same room, they fight against each other to prove who is the best developer in town, right? FYI, we've run some international events already. You can see, hopefully, in a second, how many people uh, Look how many people has joined some of the challenges, yeah? Hundreds of developers. So for instance, we ran Spain versus UK, yeah? More than 100 developers. Big, big, big battle. Do you know what was the result? Yeah, Spanish uh, cheated. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a bit unfair, right? It was clearly an outstanding victory for the Spanish team, right? And now I got a call the day after, Monday. You know from who? from the Russians. They smell blood, right? They are really good on that. So you are more than invited to join the second international JavaScript challenge hosted by Kodri. Yeah? It will run on the 20th of November. Yeah? So, uh, and you know, so that, that's pretty much it. It's, it. That's the platform. You got many statistics. You can see yourself in the Hall of Fame where you can see who is the best developer of the day, the best developer of the week, of the month, the best developer ever. So this guy, for instance, Marvin, he won a big challenge yesterday with 60 developers, the first of the platform. Just look at the picture, right? So this guy is really good, clearly. Um, you can see statistics by country, yeah? Where are the best developers? Many, 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 many different things, right? Um, of course, if you like, uh, now we got the jobs boards. So here you can find job opportunities as well, yeah? So we are clearly trying to help our students to be successful developers. So, I mean, if you like it, you go to coldery.com. There is a link to book your place. Next cohort, the last one of the year, starts on the 20th of October. Only a few places left. This could be a fantastic opportunity to become a successful developer, right? That's a way to say thank you. You get a promo code that expires tomorrow at midnight. So if you book your place using that code, you get 10% off, right? Uh, apart from that, I hope you enjoy this session. Thank you very much for coming. 
And now I'll bring some beers, so you're more than invited to get some fresh air into the terrace. And we'll have a ping pong tournament in 30 minutes, so you're welcome to stay as well. Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you.